The Des Moines North Polar Bears won three football games the past five years and three already this season. Can North make it four? What a good story. Homecoming for Des Moines Lincoln and a nice crowd to cheer the rails. But Norse Aaron Gonk, Gonk Aaron and the North Polar Bears were ready to crash the party. After a Lincoln field goal, North takes over with a huge rushing touchdown by the 5A leading rusher Aaron Gonk Aaron. North goes up 8-3 after the two-point conversion. North back into the end zone with running back Gabe Gunn. These guys have some great names. Gabe Gunn evades defenders, and Gabe Gunn scores at 16-3 after two points. Then our guy, Gonk Aaron. Uh, Gonk Aaron continues his dominance, makes it look easy with another touchdown. 22-3 North, and North wins. 36-17, the Polar Bears are 4-1. and one. Des Moines Roosevelt calls Drake Stadium home. The visitors tonight, Rick Nelson and the Ankeny Hawks, fresh off the takedown of Southeast Polk. Early action, Ankeny quarterback J.J. Cole swings it to Evan Erlmeyer. Erlmeyer cruises into the zone and Ankeny leads. The Hawks student section not scared of a little rain. Later in the half, they give to Jason Williams and he turbos in for six points and Ankeny turns back Roosevelt 35-18. Valley Tigers taking the field. Tigers hosting Marshalltown and on the first drive, Valley quarterback Michael Provenza looks for Bryce Anderson, has him, and that's a touchdown Tigers and Valley upends Marshalltown 35-14. It's Ames at Sioux City North. Little Cyclone quarterback Dallas Souser fakes the handoff. Nice fake. Rolls left. He's there. Ball pops out, but the refs say he reached the end zone. So that's a touchdown, Little Cyclones. Ames back on the move. This time it's Souser connecting with Jalen Luth. And he'd take care of the rest. And Ames puts it on Sioux City North 57 to 28. Well, it's time for our weekly Beyond the Highlights look as Mark Froing takes you inside a Football Friday with unique sights and sounds. We call it Wired. And Mark, what do you have for us this week? Well, Keith, we're always hearing about officiating shortages and the impact that has on high school athletics. Well, we definitely need more officials like the man I caught up with today. Scott Brown holds an immensely important job. Special Assistant Attorney General. I'm the Division Director of Area Prosecutions. Pursuing justice. Area Prosecutions exists uh, in the Attorney General's office to assist uh, local county attorneys in the prosecution of major felony cases when they need assistance. And Brown has worked some very high profile cases over the years, among them the Molly Tibbetts case and the Ed Thomas case. Uh, we work on behalf of the people and uh, it is our job to seek justice. That's ultimately always our goal. Seeking justice by day. Guys, my name's Scott Brown. I'm going to be the referee tonight. Dishing it out on Friday nights. Nothing late, no talking, or late hits out of bounds. I've been officiating since uh, 1994. Brown is the crew chief for a five-man team. They're fantastic people, great guys, a lot of fun to sp uh, spend time with. The nice thing about this crew is everybody's fairly seasoned, right? Nobody's a, is a, is a new person. <laughs> And officiating can be a lot like prosecuting. It's similar in the sense that we're always trying to do the right thing. Personal foul, dropping the pass. Drawing lines between right and wrong, holding people accountable. Automatic first down. Flag or no flag. 75 on the offense, 10 yards from the spot, second down. The law's a rule, and so he has to adjudicate the laws based off of the laws that are passed and what the rules are. That's the same with football, right? Um, you don't make up rules, you follow the rules. That's what I've always said I've loved about my job, is it allows me to always be in a position to make the right decision for a lot of people. And the same is true with an officiating crew. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. The consequences for game infractions are certainly less severe than those for criminal acts. But Scott and his crew know that the results of their actions on the field matter greatly. So at the end of the night, we need to walk off the field saying we fairly officiated that game, gave the kids a fair chance uh, within the rules to play the game, and they decided uh, what the result would be. Scott and his crew officiating Waukee 
and Johnston tonight. Terrible conditions, tough to hang on to the football. But Rex Woodley is going to do just that here. 22 yard touchdown pass from Will Nuss. It's Johnston's only touchdown of the night. But that's all the Dragons need. Johnston wins in a slugfest 10 to 6. They had a good crew overseeing that game tonight. Shout out to Jim Wilson, Philip Bauman, Kurt Reno, Alan Dries, and of course, Scott Brown. Good crew, Keith. That is a good crew. Uh, we've seen them do several games around here. Uh, great story tonight, Mark. Enjoyed that very much.